Well, good morning, folks. It's 5.55 a.m. Here is today's European Union news update from the UK. Lack of EU unity will prevent new anti-Russian sanctions. Is immigration really good for our economy? Some background. India's trade relations with the European Union, France and Germany. And two stories from our archives. Russia suggests EU think about cooperation in European Eurasian integration process. And Russia makes new attempt to woo Ukraine. The EU waits in the wings. Now, today I want to focus on this concept of trading unions or common markets. And to do so, I have pulled those last two stories from our archives that demonstrate where the woes began for the Ukraine all the way back in 2013. I'm glad you're joining me and don't forget to subscribe here. It makes all of my efforts worthwhile. I'm Rick Timmis and here are the observations from the UnitUK.com. Lack of EU unity will prevent new anti-Russian sanctions, says MP. This from our homepage today, and I quote, The European Union will not tighten its sanctions policy against Russia, as several of its members would block such a move, a senior Russian MP in charge of foreign policy has said. Now, as far as new sanctions are concerned, now I am sure that Europe is very unlikely to impose them because there are nations that would not agree to this. Greece, Cyprus, Hungary and Italy. And if even a single nation does not agree, then there would be no decision, such as the voting procedure, Deputy Head of the Lower House Committee for the International Relations Leonid Kalashnikov said. <laughs> Well, we can see the current state of affairs between the EU and Russia. Now, I'm sure the US would like Mrs Merkel to go all the way, but the US forgets that the EU baby is still only an adolescent federal state. Is immigration really good for our economy? Tony Blair tried to boost Labour's election prospects by arguing that an EU referendum, which the Conservatives are promising, but Labour is not, would do severe damage to the economy, putting aside the casual assumptions that our best economic interests are indubitably served by staying in the EU, which is in fact the subject of intense dispute. The implications seem to be that on this vital national issue, all other concerns should be subordinated to the economy. Well, we should be up in arms over statements of this nature. Tony Blair is speaking like a fellow of the Fourth Reich. No politician has the right or authority to decree how power and governance of the people is handled. The man is behaving like King John before Magna Carta. What is this divine right of Tony Blair to deny the people's right to a democratic vote over how governance of their country is run? Let's understand that the immigration message is a political trap. We are all people of the world and children of the earth, God, Allah. There are good people and bad people. We should treat each according to how we find them. The reality, is immigration good for the economy? Well, only in the sense that you can use it to hide the real political intent and distract the populace with dividing messages and ridiculous labels. India's trade relations with the European Union, France and Germany. The European Union is India's largest trading partner, accounting for 20% of India's trade. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's maiden trip to France and Germany is aimed at increasing investment in India as well as creating business for European industries. India's main trading partners in the EU are France, Germany and Britain. Wow! So India is now part of the European Customs Union. (laughs) So let me get this right. The EU isn't trading with African orange farmers anymore because, well, they're not members and their oranges have got spots on them. But it's okay with India because they buy our polluting industries like Tata Steel, move them to India and then run them there outside of EU pollution laws. Oh, but it gets get better, because then they sell back the carbon credits they bought with those EU companies to other EU companies that then continue polluting too. <laughs> well, I would say the EU and our MEP's work is done. It must be time for a little more troughing in the calves of Brussels.
Russia suggests the EU think about cooperation in European Eurasian integration process. So, jumping back into our archives from 2014, the customs union is not a geopolitical rival of the European Union, and it is necessary to think about cooperation between the European and Eurasian integration processes, Russia's envoy to the US, Vladimir Chichov, said. This is the essence of the customs union proposal to the EU, Chichov said, when speaking on January 13th at the European Policy Centre in Brussels. So there is the open invitation to the EU to begin the process of building a trading union with Russia and her friends in what is termed the Eurasian Union. Now, don't lose sight of the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, which the US and her friends are also tabling. Now, this is where the conflict began. That led to Yanukovych being ousted via a clandestine US-driven coup, orchestrated and overseen by Victoria Newland, and as we heard in her conversation with Jeffrey Payat, even reported on the BBC. So, when they decided that Yatsenyuk would be their puppet Prime Minister... Now, links to all of today's articles are below. And our final supporting article from the archive, Russia makes new attempt to woo Ukraine and the EU waits in the wings. So Russian President Vladimir Putin made a new attempt to woo Ukraine on Thursday after the European Union and United States stepped up efforts to pull Kiev out of its former Soviet master's orbit. A day after Europe and US officials held talks with Ukraine President Viktor Yanukovych in Kiev, Putin used a state of the nation address to tout the economic benefits of joining a customs union that he wants Ukraine to be part of. Now, Yanukovych, who is seeking the best possible deal for his country of 46 million people as it tries to stave off bankruptcy, provoked street protests in Kiev by spurning the chance to sign a free trade pact with the EU last month and saying he wanted to revive ties with Russia instead. And... Boom! The coup is launched, with reports of covert US and CIA and mercenary, all of which is documented on record. Just a quick Google for US CIA Ukraine will return all the results you're looking for. And in a snap, Yanukovych is ousted and Yatsenyuk is installed, just as Newland said in her call with Jeffrey Pyatt. Now, let me urge you to go back to our video library and watch the Table Talk episode with Rodney Atkinson. We talk in depth about how trading unions become trading wars and currency wars and then hot wars. Go take a look. So, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, or one word. Please do come and join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinion and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter at The E Unit. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe here. I'm Rick Timmis, observing for theunituk.com. I'll see you soon.